because yeah, when he plugs in this little unit is on. Really? Mm -hmm. That's funny. Like you said, you're just shooting a music video. That's kind of fun. I wonder what kind of music they play. We've been trying to get him to bring some of it into us, but uh, he keeps putting us off for two years. Our last class is Wednesday. So he said he may bring his guitar and play for us. Aww. The graffiti. Okay. Uh, you're good. Okay. Alrighty, fine. Okay, so um, tell me a little bit about, I guess, what's been keeping you busy <laughs> for the last few months here. What's going on in the U District? Well, maybe more than just the last few months, actually, for the last uh, 16 months since last June, the, the biggest thing happening in the University District uh, was the, the app project. The, the complete reconstruction of not only the street and the sidewalks, but replacement of all of the infrastructure. So the street was completely torn out. The sidewalks were torn out, and the old trolley ties had to be pulled out, and all of the old uh, utilities and electrical, all of that came out and was replaced with brand new everything. Um, after the, after, after all of that disruption and all of the new utilities went in and they poured the new street and poured our new wider sidewalks, yeah. we now have real sidewalks <laughs> instead of the, the little skinny sidewalks we had a year and a half ago. Um, the, other, the other amenities started going in. New trees up and down the street, um, 70 new trees um, or so. Um, new uh, bus bulbs, which are these elongated things for the buses to stop rather than pulling in and out of traffic, uh -huh. which as it turns out, actually does not slow traffic down. Uh, we discovered in a study that was done before the project started. New pedestrian lights, and that's one of the things that I think the merchants are the most excited about is having these new pedestrian lights because it really warms the street at night. It makes it this delightful place to walk, um, which was not the case uh, a year and a half ago. And, and the lighting, I think, has made all the difference in the world. I'm sorry, you said the lighting has done what? I think that the lighting has just made all the difference in the world here. Yeah. We've got new bike racks, we've got benches, we've got uh, waste baskets that you know, are clean and green and new. And yeah. 
Um, and we've got these, these little hitching post things that people have been uh, hooking up their, their bikes to. And the, the chamber, who has played a really large part in, in all of this work, has a new program that's being implemented called the Adopt a Pole and Adopt a Tree program um, up and down the app where they're encouraging businesses to take care of the, of the tree in front of their business, you know, plant things, um, and um, take down posters and you know, keep their poles clean. Um, so that's been, that's been you know, over $8 million worth of infrastructure improvements, which uh, the U District desperately needed yeah. and is very happy to have yeah. and is certainly looking forward to a brighter future, yeah. literally brighter future. <laughs> What's been the Department of Neighborhoods role in all of this in such a huge project? <laughs> uh, to try to stay out of the way. <laughs> um, the, the Department of Neighborhoods as uh, the coordinators, as we do in every neighborhood, I think I have been working closely with the businesses uh, in addition to the New York Public Relations team who worked on the street uh, as a liaison between the construction crew and the businesses. I also had weekly contact with most of the businesses because I got to deliver to them the update uh, bulletin which let them know what was what was going on with construction. It was a wonderful opportunity for me to get into the businesses and, and, and talk to business owners. Most of the businesses on the app are small businesses. You know, 99 percent of them are small businesses. And it was a great chance to, to get to know people, get to know how business is going, get to know over the course of a year and a half uh, sort of the ups and downs of you could literally watch uh, business go away when their block was closed off, yeah. and then uh, and then watching it sort of you know, rush back in when when the block was reopened it was a pretty gratifying experience. But it was also really great to be able to talk with those business owners and and help them resolve issues and problems that came up during the construction process. Um, so for this project, I think that a big part of my job has been to work with the public relations outfit and with the chamber to try to make sure that the, uh, that the city was you know, doing right by the businesses, was doing everything that we could to make this you know, a less painful uh, project. It seems like the benefits, though, are going to extend beyond just the businesses in this area to the, the wider community here in this area. You know, the AV project, uh, although it actually started before the neighborhood planning project, uh, or neighborhood planning process, the AV project started uh, planning about 10 years ago. And uh, neighborhood planning started in 94, 95. Um, the, I think that the AV project as, as a sort of cornerstone piece of the University Community Urban Center plan is, is terrifically significant in, in really kicking off the, the plan um, that, because it represents so much more than just infrastructure improvements. One of the things that's, that has happened as a result of all of the work that was done uh, in, in communicating and planning with businesses and the chamber on the AV is the creation of uh, block captains now. In each of the blocks there is a contact or contacts who will continue to work with businesses on their block about uh, public safety and um, other issues that come up for the businesses. And the other, the other big pieces that the plan um, includes are looking at not just the street, but the people who walk on the street, the, the neighbors, people who live in this neighborhood, the students who go to school at the University of Washington, um, the neighborhood organizations, 
uh, homeless kids on the street. All, all of these people who are such an important part of the, the really the, the richness of the university district are now in the process of figuring out, okay, we cleaned up the street, now how do we all work together to sort of make sure that um, all of the other structures are in place to, to make the app not only, make the U District not only a vibrant place to, you know, beautiful place to shop, but a place that works for everybody. Uh, and by that we mean, we really mean everybody, yeah. um, including homeless kids, service providers. Yeah. Yeah. It's a busy area. It seems like there's a lot of... Classes? Yes, that too. <laughs> Very much so. Um, it's almost, it's like the nexus of a lot of different... Um, a lot of different parts of the community you mentioned the the homeless kids, the students, the local residents, businesses. Um, there's a lot going on here. There is. It's pretty exciting, and I think that one of the one of the most tangible, exciting things that is about to happen is the University of Washington, for the first time, is uh, consolidating their orientation for new students. So, 5,000 new students. Freshmen and transfer students who are coming to the University of Washington starting Monday will arrive this week. And beginning on Thursday, there is an orientation that will be taking place that is uh, introducing students not only to the academic side of what their next four years or whatever yeah. is going to be, but, but also this year for the first time is introducing them to the university district. So, you know, and this is the neighborhood that you are now going to be a part of. So, to the and you know, kudos to the university for um, reaching out to again to the chamber, uh, to the neighborhood service center, to the service provider community to say, okay, so we want to do this orientation in a way that will be meaningful for students, for those 5,000 students to really figure out. So, how can I get involved in what is this new neighborhood that I'm coming to and um, and how can I be respectful of that and participate in that um, when I'm not, you know, in class or studying? And this coming Saturday, there's going to be a dinner at University Heights Center that will welcome 500 students, um, a free dinner for students, um, to welcome them to the, the university community. The cool thing about this dinner is that at each of the 50 tables, we will have um, a table captain, somebody from the neighborhood, um, a business owner, um, a member of a community organization, um, homeless kids, service providers, uh, members of the faith community. Uh, the university district has uh, 10 large churches and 10,000 members in those churches uh, right here in the district. So that's a big piece of of this neighborhood. They will all be at this dinner and will each have the opportunity to sit at a table and talk with students about this is my neighborhood. You know, welcome to my neighborhood and this is what this is what it looks like to me. And I hope that you will be, you know, great neighbors and participate in and uh, what's going on here while you are a neighbor here. Sounds like some great partnerships underway in this area. Yeah. There, there are you know partnerships between the, the university and the chamber and the uh, neighborhood organizations. Um, and certainly I think one of the one of the one of the great partnerships that is occurring right now that uh, we're gonna get to hear more about is between service providers, homeless youth and the police. And and that's been a real tough one. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's I think that's one that will take a lot of care and nurturing, yeah. but uh, has a lot of promise and makes me excited. What's your favorite part of doing this job in this area? Uh, the the diversity of, of people. Um, I go in a day to a meeting with homeless kids and service providers to a chamber lunch to um, a neighborhood organization uh, meeting where they're discussing land development uh, issues and it is um, a pretty fascinating, savvy, sophisticated uh, neighborhood and I am constantly learning um, and 
um, you know, grateful to be in a position that allows me to do that. Sounds good. Anything I'm forgetting? Uh, I don't. I think you touched on all of it. Okay, we'll do your little uh, stand up. I'm Karen. This is U District. Call me if you have problems, uh, questions, issues. Yeah, right. Call. Alrighty, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, three, two, one. I'm Karen. Anytime. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Hi, I'm Karen Co. You have to do three, two, one. Oh, I have to say three, yeah. two, one. Oh. It gives, it gives them time when they're editing so that there's enough time for the tape to kind of catch up to speed and all that. Okay. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Karen Coe, the coordinator for the University Neighborhood Service Center. If you have any questions or issues or complaints or compliments, please call me at 233-3732. And my email address is Karen, K-A-R-E-N, dot co, K-O, at seattle.gov. Thanks. Do that one more time. That is perfect, but I just want to frame it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that works. Or if you want it, uh, if you can fit in or if you can get to uh, the... All right, we're ready. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Karen Coe, the coordinator for the University Neighborhood Service Center. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> and I'm really happy. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Karen Coe, the coordinator for the University Neighborhood Service Center. If you would like to get involved with the University District or any of the, any of the programs here, please give me a call at 233-3732. My email address is karen, K-A-R-E-N, dot co, K-O, at seattle.gov. Thanks. It started well, they're not quite ready for us, but... Okay. <laughs> but it actually started, came out of a, an initial attempt at neighborhood planning in the late 80s. Okay. Before the city's comprehensive plan. Okay. The okay. And, yeah. um, it's like going to the dentist over before you know it, I suppose. <laughs> Um, so you have been involved, you said you uh, own a business in the area. I do. So mm -hmm. how did you get involved in, you know, how did you and the AV project become connected yeah. and how did that all come about? Well, I've been involved with the Chamber of Commerce. The business has been a member of the Chamber of Commerce since it first opened. And we've been fairly active and I've been on the board of the Chamber. Um, and amongst other things, I represented the Chamber on the local uh, City University Advisory Committee, CUCAC, for several years. And with that, you begin to hear a lot of the concerns of the neighborhood about the whole district. And it just keeps going. You put your feet in the water and the crocodiles grab you, I guess. But uh, no, it's, we had, we've been in the business, the business has been here for 40 years. And over the last 10 or 12 years, we've noticed a change in the business climate. And by the mid-90s, we were feeling a downturn and not happy about it. Um, and looking around for some way of trying to look at the district as a whole and saying, you know, can we get something going here? Mm -hmm. Because there had been a lot of changes in the dynamics of retail business. Mm -hmm. And it was the same time that, about the time that University Village was having its revitalization. And someone was putting a lot of investment down there and they said, hey, there must be people out here who will respond or else they wouldn't be pouring it in there. And we were sitting here doing nothing, basically. And the situation in a business district like this is, of course, it's much more complicated. We have a lot of individual private business owners and a lot of individual property owners and the city who owns the street and all the infrastructure. And so we said, you know, the street is critical to how people see the street, see the district, see the Ave, being a pleasant place to come to, having a fresh face we felt was very important. Mm -hmm. And so a series of us put together a, a little group called the Ave Group, 1993-94, uh, like that, and started making long-range plans. The Chamber of Commerce kicked in some money for some original uh, idea development, and we hired a very good consultant who's good at this kind of stuff and uh, we were able to work it out and we took some plans to the city after the uh, neighborhood plan was was finished and said this is what we really need here and we need it badly 
because they were aware of the fact that the reputation of this business district was hurting, business was hurting, and their tax collections were hurting too. So it all made good sense to us at least that the city do this. And uh, we got some response finally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the 10 or 12 years in the making and then at 10 or 12 years in the making months of, 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 of working it out, <laughs> challenges, living with the pain, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. But uh, those of us who had been planning on it knew it was going to be painful, and we tried our best to warn people, tighten up your belt ahead of time, you know, put some reserves aside, mm -hmm. uh, see if you can capitalize on this on some other way. Mm -hmm. uh, but we knew it was going to hurt, and it did. Uh, some of us didn't hurt as much as I thought it might, mm -hmm. but definitely business was down while they've got the street torn up in front of you. And, uh, but we had people coming by out of curiosity afterwards, yeah. and I do see people coming back to the street and saying, oh, this is nice, this does look nice, mm -hmm. and uh, feeling better about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, the, so the reality has kind of lived up to the hopes for the neighborhood? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's too, certain, too, too early to, to tell right now. Whether the, you know, we're going to have a big booming business and so on, this thing has been finished, what, two months. Mm -hmm. And what we're waiting for is to get the impact of students returning, the faculty returning to the area, the streets get filled with people, which they normally are by the first week of October. And we'll see how fall goes through Christmas, because that's a critical period for a lot of businesses here. Mm -hmm. uh, but also whether just the place feels lively again and friendly and, and welcoming. And that's what we were looking for. So is the app project is the app project complete? Is it done? And now it's just wait and see. Um, it's about ninety percent done or ninety five percent done. Mm -hmm. The uh, one of the things that's coming out of it, we hope fairly soon, is that we're going to change the the actual parking meters on the street, and have the new pay parking system where you have a box on two oh. two spots along a block, and people take it there, and we'll get one more piece of street furniture out of the way. Parking meters will be gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are hoping that the city sets those up here, and they've talked about it, because there's a lot of people in this area who are used to this kind of parking metering, other parts of the country, other parts of the world, mm -hmm. and we think it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the challenges that any business area like this has, and that is the challenge of parking, mm -hmm. because our clientele still often comes by car, right. uh, but it's uh, making it a more interesting place or an easier place to park, mm -hmm. a par place to uh, so people are coming out of curiosity, even for a few, few times, and then come back later. Uh, that's part of it. There's also a, a final completion of the uh, Campus Parkway uh, two-block section there of the boulevard part of the parkway there that we got together another group in the area and over about a month's period designed and have designs now for a layout to make that into a part of a new little sculpture garden that would be tied in with the university and the other part, just a little slightly spiffed up little parkway space there. And that has yet to be finished. That's where they still have all their construction staging uh, facilities set up. And we're hoping to get that done sometime next, between now and next spring. So still a lot of projects on the drawing board. There are several projects on the drawing board, yeah. But the main part of it, certainly the main visual part of it, is done, it's here. We have pedestrian street lighting now so that we've got a row of street lights down the sidewalk mm -hmm. that are really better for people to walk around at night. And that's when you see this at night, now that we're getting earlier darks, mm -hmm. uh, it really does make a difference. That's a huge visual impression, people coming to the area. Overall, what's your, what's your impression of how, how everything has turned out over these, uh, this past decade and the final project? Of, it took a long time. <laughs> uh, but we had... We had the luck of having a person on the committee who had uh, a lot of experience working with the city. She'd worked with the city for several years before she retired, mm -hmm. knew the kinds of channels that had to be kept open, mm -hmm. and basically said, you know, what you do is you go down and you make your plans, you make them clear, make it concise, and then you start talking about it, and you get in line, and you push, and you push, and at some point, the money opens up, and you make sure you're ready for it. And we were. As a matter of fact, the city council got sort of blindsided with a, a, a shortfall on their financing on this. And we went out again and said, please make this go now. And they put their necks out and bonded this rather than taking it from direct grants with the expectation that two years later, the grant operation would come in and fill a gap 
that the earthquake had created. Now, we weren't going to fight with the earthquake, right. but we did say this is needed as much as earthquake repair. Yeah. And I think it's been, it's been good. So satisfied yeah. with the uh, overall? Yes, we are. Yeah. One of the concerns that had been was uh, the last two or three years before this started, we had several uh, vacant storefronts on the street, which doesn't always look good. Mm -hmm. A certain amount of vacancy is always a chance uh, situation in business, but we had too many, and two or three of them were pretty noticeable. Uh, about half of those are refilled now, so we're feeling that people are coming back in. Uh, it, uh, we don't always have a choice as to who we get as a neighbor uh, in a business area like this, but uh, we're hoping that over a period of time, if people see the difference on the street, that will get better, somewhat better quality mix of, of businesses in here. Mm -hmm. But it's always going to be a very diverse area with a lot of strange stuff that mm -hmm. a lot of people under 25 like to go to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us over 45 don't know why it exists. But that's a gap that we've always lived with here. Yeah. That's OK. It makes yeah. it vibrant. It makes it vibrant. Sometimes the vibrations on the floor at night are a little too much, but we'll live with that. Yeah. OK, yeah. excellent. That's it. Thank you okay. very much. Well, okay.